Having a successful and imposing return of serve all boils down to one word, time. Specifically, you want to find ways to buy time for yourself with your return, all while still pressuring your opponents and giving them less time and space. Now why do you need to create time when returning? Well, one big advantage for the returning team is created by the two bounce rule. The ball must bounce twice after the serve, once on the returning team side and once on the serving team side, before anyone can hit a volley. That means that the returning team has the first opportunity to hit a volley if they wish, which affords them the luxury of advancing to the net after the return if they choose to. And you absolutely should choose to every time you can, because pickleball, like most sports, is a ground war. The team that is up at the net generates the most opportunities for themselves to get high contact points, with which they can hit down and away or hard and through. It's the most offensive court positioning you can have, and you want to achieve it early and often in every point. Now, as the returner, why might you need time? What are you buying time for? Well, since none of us humans travel at the speed of light, we all need some time to move from near the baseline, from where we are likely hitting the return, to the net. And we want to do so in such a way as to establish good positioning before the next shot is being struck by the opposing team. Ideally, you'd like to get all the way up after the return, or if that's not possible, you'd at least like to get as close as you can to that non-volley zone line before the opponents are striking the ball. Hopefully, you can at least make it more than halfway up from the baseline or more. So how do you buy time for yourself so that you can get up to the net and impart maximum pressure on your opponents? That's exactly what we're going to learn in today's video. I'm Nicole Havlicek. This is Primetime Pickleball. Let's dive into today's topic. Missing one of our videos is like missing an easy put away. Don't let that be you. Subscribe now. For the demos in this video, we're going to be using a skinny singles format, using the odd side only. So we're simulating doubles with two players, and they can only play out the point cross court. If they hit it down the line, it's out in this format. Skinny singles is a great way to practice your doubles game. Since you're going to hit every shot that comes on your side, you will get a lot more touches on the ball and therefore a lot more repetitions in the same amount of time when compared to playing regular doubles with four players. If you're seeking to improve quickly, then skinny singles is something that you'll want to add to your pickleball routine. So with that in mind, here's a point that illustrates something that we see all too often out on the courts. Here's a serve that is on the deeper side. It's past the halfway mark of the service box, so not very deep, but it's an okay serve. Here we see the returner let the serve come in, and he is still pinned pretty far back by the time he's done with the return. He wants to get to the net, so he begins making his way up there despite the return being short. The server rips a third shot drive at the returner's feet, making for a tough fourth shot because he's quite far back when he could have been up here. It floats high, and the server attacks and the block is missed. Now, we're going to cover all the things that the returner could have done better that could have led to him being well established and here, instead of back here, on the fourth shot. We'll also cover some other scenarios that often happen with the same result, and again show you how you can turn things around and make the trip to the net a whole lot easier for yourself when you're the returning player. And, as I mentioned previously, it comes down to finding ways to buy time. So, now that we know the parameters, let's get into it. One of the key ways to buy time is to be sure to give yourself enough space to receive the serve. So unless the wind is blowing hard at your back, or the current server is notorious for always hitting short serves, you'll want to back it up to around here and adjust accordingly based on the known tendencies of the server and how strong a serve they have. Because from here, you afford yourself the time to let the serve bounce, peak, and still be able to hit it out in front and moving through the return as you hit it. That is the key thing that all strong returners do. They have momentum and are in forward motion as they strike the return so that they are covering distance towards the non-volley zone line as they are returning. If you are static when you return, then you are not covering any ground during that time, and you now have more ground to cover while the ball is already on its way back over to your opponents. You've now lost some valuable time and are playing catch up instead of getting ahead. That may prove to be costly. When you implement the tips we're sharing in today's video, we're confident it will help your game. As helpful as these tips are, they're only part of the story when it comes to playing winning doubles pickleball. If you want to learn all the strategies you'll need to dominate the doubles court, then you'll want to check out our complete doubles system, so you have a clear A to Z plan to follow. 
because when you have a clear and proven plan, you can confidently and systematically win more points in games and have more fun on the court. Go to doublesystem.com today to learn all about it. All right, let's get back to today's video. Another key way to buy yourself time is to hit the return deep. The longer you can keep your shot in flight, the more time you have to get up to the line. Of course, when we're talking distance, a farther distance keeps your ball in flight longer than a shorter distance. So you want to use the maximum distance available to you, which will put your ideal target deep. This has the added benefit of making third shots harder for the serving team. Often, they'll be attempting a third shot drop, which is much harder to achieve from here than it is from here. Your deep return that they must let bounce will force them to have to hit that third shot from farther back in the court, all while you're crashing the net and your partner is already up there. Hitting a good shot while facing your team's imposing court positioning, plus the place from which they're hitting, can often prove to be a difficult task for them and is to your advantage. In addition to hitting it deep and buying yourself time with the long flight of the ball, another thing you can do is to hit it slower. It will take longer to get there as opposed to a fast and hard hit return, thus again buying you even more time to make your transition to the net. One of the best ways to hit the ball slower is to use slice. Slice also has the benefit of skidding off the ground, which will keep it lower after the bounce, and the spin can often complicate the timing of a clean contact for your opponent, which is also to your benefit. You can also simply hit a regular flat return with a bit more height and loft to it, which you can hit slower and deep if slice is not yet in your repertoire of shots. That should still be quite effective. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, one of the most common things we see on the return is a strong desire to hit it with one's forehand, since typically players tend to have a stronger forehand than backhand. The challenge with running around a shot when you could use the side to which the shot came to hit it is that it can put you in a significantly compromised position and cost you a lot of time. You'll now be way out of position and have to cover a much longer distance to get to the non-volley zone line than if you had simply taken it with the side to which the shot came. You can run around your shot somewhat to hit the other shot and it might be okay depending on how quick you are or it might produce a problem and cost you a lot of time leading to lost points that didn't need to be. Each person must decide for themselves how far over they can go and take it with their other shot, often a forehand, all while still not giving away so much time that it will significantly impact your next shot leading you to get behind in the point and ultimately losing it as a result. Your best bet is to build up your weaker side, often the backhand, so that you trust it and can rely upon getting it deep and coming in behind it. Having a reliable shot on both sides will open up so many opportunities for you in your entire game. It's really to your benefit to not be overly reliant on one side. If you look at all the best players, they are solid on both wings. One side may be more potent than the other, and they like to attack with it more, but the less potent side is usually still very reliable. You need to make time your friend on the return, so you can get to the net fast and dominate the point early and often. That is a sure way to help you come out ahead in points and games. Use these tips to ramp up your returning game. A big thank you to Taylor Bryant and Josh Bernstein for their help with this video. If you enjoy this video, please go ahead, like, comment, and share. For more pro player pickleball tips, techniques, strategies, and more on how to take your game to the next level, please visit primetimepickleball.com. You'll find a clickable direct link in the video description below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one, and until then, happy pickling.